The rules for adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers are very different than the rules for multiplying and dividing negative numbers. So let's go through and figure out what our um, procedures are anytime that we want to add and subtract integers or any positive and negative numbers at all. When we do a determination of our answer, we still are going to use the same idea of looking at the signs of the numbers that we're working with. If our signs are the same, we're going to add our values and we're going to keep the sign of the numbers that we are adding. Now, what we're learning now is just rules for addition. We'll do subtraction here later. There's a slight modification that we need to make for subtraction. Um, so let's consider this. Five plus five, our rule or our signs are the same, so we're going to add them, and we're going to keep the sign that they had. So a positive five plus a positive five helps us and ends up at a positive ten. If we have something like negative six plus negative six, same thing. Signs are the same. So we're going to add our numbers. 6 plus 6 is 12. And we're going to keep the sign of what we were adding. In this case, that would be a negative 12. So um, when we're adding, sometimes we get positive numbers, sometimes we get negative numbers, but it's going to be the same of whatever it is that we started with. Uh, where this gets interesting is when our signs are different. When our signs are different, even though it's an addition problem, we're actually going to subtract. And this time, we're going to keep the sign of the bigger number. Let's look at a couple of examples of that. Let's suppose that I have 10 plus negative 8. In this case, I, my signs are different. The 10 is positive and the 8 is negative, so I'm going to subtract those numbers. When I subtract 10 and 8, I end up with 2, and then I'm going to keep the sign of the bigger value. In this case, I had 10 that were positive, but only 8 that were negative, so I end up with more positive values, and so my answer resulting is positive. If I do something like this, negative 7 plus 4. Again, my signs are different. I have a negative number and a positive number. I'm going to subtract the values. So 7 minus 4 is 3. And I'm going to keep the sign of the larger number. 7 is bigger than 4. 7 was negative. So in this case, my answer is going to be a negative 3. One of the things that really helps me with addition is to think of this in terms of either um, sports teams or money. Let's look at money. If you think of positive numbers as having money and negative numbers as owing money, all of these rules kind of make sense. Um, here, if I, have, if I have money and I add more money, I have lots more money. If I owe someone and then I owe someone more, I owe a lot more money. However, if I have some money and then I owe someone, if I have $10 and owe someone eight, I still have $2 left in my possession. If I owe someone $7, but I only pay them four back, I still owe them $3. So thinking in terms of finances is really helpful when you're dealing with positive and negative numbers. You can do the same thing if you think of teams. How are the teams growing? In this case, five members of the positive team go with another five members of the positive team, and I have 10 members on the positive team. Here, six members on the negative team, another six join the negative team for a total of 12 on the negative team. Here, I have 10 on the positive team, but 8 on the negative team, so the positive team has 2 more than the other. What are they winning by? Here, I end up with 7 on the negative team, 4 players on the positive team. Some of those match up, I end up with 3 extra players on the negative team. So those kinds of things can really help me visualize and try to recognize what the answer and solution is that I'm trying to come up with. So those are the rules for addition. Now, if you notice when we're adding, sometimes we add and sometimes we subtract. So what do we actually do if it's a subtraction problem? Well, let's take a look. If we are trying to solve a subtraction problem, what we want to do instead is 
we want to change our problem to an addition problem. Now, if you remember, we kind of did this sort of a concept before with fractions, with the multiplying and dividing that time, though, right? Um, if we were dividing fractions, we wanted to change it to a multiplication problem. With fractions, once you changed it to multiplication, we had to balance it, and we used a reciprocal. Here, when we change to an addition problem to balance it, what we're going to do is we're going to have to change the number after it. So we're going to change the next number to a different sign. Let's look at some examples of how this would work. This up a little bit. Let's suppose that we start with 3 and we want to subtract negative 7. Never subtract again. I see a subtraction and I'm going to change it to an addition. Then, to keep my expression balanced, I also have to change the sign of the number that comes after it. I had a negative 7. It's now going to become a positive 7. Now that I have an addition rule, now I can go ahead and follow the rules that I've done before. 3 plus 7 gives me 10 as a result. 3 on the positive team, 7 more. We end up with 10 altogether. Let's do a couple of other examples. Let's suppose that we have negative 5 and we want to subtract 15. Okay. Never subtract again. We're going to change it to a positive number. So, uh, or to a plus rather. So in this case, I have negative 5. I'm going to change my subtraction to an addition. And then I'm going to change the sign of the number that comes after it. In this case, it was a positive 15. So now I'm going to make it into a negative 15. Now that it's an addition problem, I can go ahead and add. My signs are the same. I have 5 on the negative side. Another 15 on the negative side makes a total of 20 on the negative side. And my solution ends up being a negative 20. Now, let's take a look at what happens in a situation like this. Here, we have more than one operation going on, so we need to also fall back on our order of operations. So we have 6 minus 9 times 2. If you go back and think to PEMDAS, right, no parentheses, no exponents, no multiplication or division, but we do have addition and subtraction. Remember, addition and subtraction are equally weighted, so we're going to add or subtract in the order we see as we go from left to right. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this expression is I'm going to solve 6 minus 9. How do I do that? Well, again, never subtract again. So I'm going to have 6. I'm going to change that minus to a plus, and then I'm going to change the sign of the number that comes after. It was a positive 9 before. Now it's a negative 9. And now I'm ready to go ahead and do that calculation. 6 plus negative 9, positive on the 6 side, 9 on the negative side leaves me with a net of 3 negatives, and then I still have to be able to add the 2 that's left. To add negative 3 plus 2, signs are different, uh, so we're going to subtract again, and we're going to end up with 1. The bigger sign is negative 1. 3 on the negative side, balancing out with 2 on the positive side, leaves me with 1 extra on the negative side when I do that comparison and that would be my solution.